Hi, Professor Judith Simons here for Austin Community College, Design 1, Arts 1311. And today we're going to be working on our first project. And we're dealing with the value scale, or the gray scale. And I have your handout right here that you should be able to access in Google Classroom. And uh, I'm going to go over the supplies that you need and the assignment objectives and what the grayscale is. So I have already given you the uh, PowerPoint presentation regarding the value scale. So now we're going to be putting it to use with uh, the materials that we have here. So uh, what we're going to be using is watercolor paper. I have a full sheet. You can do it on a half a sheet if you want to cut it in half because you'll be using half of uh, your watercolor paper for a different assignment uh, down the line. But uh, when you're tearing your watercolor paper out of the tablet, it's a very thick paper. It's a heavyweight paper. So it has a spiral, metal spiral ring, at least the brand that I'm using right now does. So it's very difficult to tear the paper out without it um, bending and getting, you know, damaged. So I take a scissors, I usually take a scissors and just cut it out very close to the metal rings that it's attached to. And then I'll be taking, then you can take a ruler or a T-square and you can get it up to the edge here, along this edge. And if you want, you could mark it with your pencil where you'll be cutting this or trimming it. This was, I tore this out of a, a binder because it was my last page and it was easy to get off. But you wouldn't have this fringe here like that. You would just be uh, cutting it with the scissors, which is very difficult to keep this, it straight when you're cutting it. So after you cut it, then you could be taking your T-square and drawing a line and I have this on top of a nice drawing board, so I don't want to use an X-Acto knife for this right now. I'm going to use a cutting board or a piece of flat cardboard, if that's all that you have at home. And you want to have this underneath there. And then you can either cut this with the scissors, or if you have an X-Acto knife, you want it that to be securely in. You'll, be getting, you'll have blades with that X-Acto knife that you you twist this and open it up and we just push that in like so and tighten it and I'm going to secure my ruler along that edge and I'm going to stand up when I do this for leverage and then we'll be just be gliding that down holding the ruler firmly and the X-Acto knife right up against that straight edge. And then we can remove that. I'm going to shift this down because my cutting board wasn't wide enough for that. And then we'll just discard that and then we have that straight edge. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna get this up to the edge of my drawing board here. Let me remove this. And this could be a straight edge on a table if you wanted it to be, um, but you don't necessarily have to have this. But I'm gonna tape this in place here so it doesn't shift on me. And I'm using quick release blue tape. This is painter's tape. And you can also use your artist tape for this as well, just to keep it from shifting on you. This is only necessary if you're using a T-square. And this is our T-square. And the nice thing about this is you can get it along the edge of your board, your drawing board or your table and move it up and down. So you get a nice uh, straight edge here that it's not you know, crooked on your page. So you're able to do it that way. The other way that you can do this if you don't have a T-square is you can be using your ruler. And we can get that right up to, oops, let me get to the inches instead of that. Get that right along this edge at one, you know, so you got that line right at the bottom of your paper. 
and I'm going to take my pencil, it's a 2B pencil, and it doesn't matter really where you start this. Um, I'm just going to, I'll go to 7 inches here, and I'm going to go along and just mark this. 7 inches here. And what we're going for in your handout, it shows that we're going to be creating a long rectangle that's going to be 2 inches in height, and then we're going to have uh, 11 2 inch squares. So I'm marking that again, 7 inches, and then I'm going to draw my straight edge here. And I'll just start at that edge, go right there. Now I'm going to go up 2 inches for my height. So what we're doing right now is we're creating our gray scale. And now I'm going to measure the top of this. It's really easy to mistake uh, eraser crumbs for your dots. So you want to be brushing your... your paper off as you work here. Okay, now I did have you get, uh, get a triangle. This is a triangle. It's a, uh, I think this is a, maybe an eight inch one. They do come in larger sizes. I have a larger size here. But for this, I'm just going to uh, use this uh, to get a right angle here. So I'm getting the bottom of my triangle right up again, right along that edge here. And I'm going to draw a line there to square it off. I'm just going to flip it over like that and go down here. This was my true measurement at the bottom. I kind of eyeballed the top line. And I'm just going to draw that here. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure two inches so we can get our two inch squares. And I don't have to measure the top because I'm going to use my triangle to create the line that divides each square. And then, there we go. All right, next step, I'm going to take my triangle and I'm gonna get it right along this bottom line again, right at that two inch mark and draw a line. Now I have my grayscale, my two inch in height and 22 inch length grayscale with 11 squares in it, two inches each. And I'm going to number them from one to 11. And what I'm going to be doing with these is I'm going to be filling the first square in with pure black and then the last one in with pure white. And then the mixture in the center is going to be a 50-50 mixture. So we can mark that one, two, three, four, five. This will be our middle, which, you know, six right there. And um, that'll be our 50-50 mixture. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, uh, I'm going to write right here black so that I remember, and white, and that's our 50-50. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some uh, black to this as we go this way, and some white as we go this way. So we want the, these, this uh, middle value to start getting lighter as we get towards the white and this one it's going to be starting to get darker with more black added to that mixture and uh, some of this you know it's not a perfect formula so sometimes it's you're having to use your eyes to see the difference 
And uh, if you paint it in and it doesn't look right, the nice thing about this is, is that you can always go over it again and paint it and um, change it up a little bit by maybe adding a little bit more white to it or a little bit more black to get a nice gradation. And so what I have in here, right here on the, on the paper is create, uh, paint the first square pure black. Then you're gonna be painting the last square pure white. Do not leave that the white of the paper. You need to paint that white. Then you're gonna be creating a 50-50 mixture of black and white and paint the middle square. Uh, then you're gonna divide the 50-50 mixture into two parts and separate. Then you'll be adding a little white to half of the mixture and a little black to the other half. Then you're gonna be painting each square opposite the middle value with each mixture. The darker value on the left, the lighter on the right. Now you'll be adding a little bit more white and a little bit more black to the same halves as you did in number five, step number five, and then repeat number six, filling in the next empty square. Your value should get lighter to the right and darker to the left. So you're gonna repeat this until all squares are filled in with value. There should be no major jumps in the value changes. You may need to adjust, like I said, or repaint some of the squares until your square values are correct. The result is called a value scale. And then uh, you'll be numbering them from one to 11. I already did that from left to right above each square. And these will be the values that you're gonna be using in your value painting composition, which I'll be covering in the next uh, segment of this assignment. All right, so what, are we, what we're using here is Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic Paint. I have my titanium white and my Mars black. Titanium white is a more opaque white, and so that's why I had you use this so we can get good coverage with it. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started uh, by using a palette. So this is one of my old palettes here. And I'm going to just squeeze out a little bit of this paint. And let's go a little bit more there like that, because I'm going to be use, doing a 50-50 mixture as well. And then some black. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that these paints, it's acrylic paint, it's not oil, it's water-based. It dries much faster than oil, which can take days or weeks to dry. This can dry while you're working with it, especially once you start mixing it and spreading it out on your palette and thinning it with some water, uh, it's easier for it to dry quickly. If you leave it in little you know, blobs like this where I squeezed it out, it can form a skin over it and you can always you know, take your palette knife. Here's a, my three inch metal palette knife. Some of you may have gotten the plastic one. Um, but you can always take this and kind of poke that skin, peel it back, and then use the paint that's on the inside of that skin that's formed. Uh, one of the things I like to use is a, a plant mister, a little water bottle, um, and I, I like it as a mist. You don't want it to be squirting or splattering because it can get all over your paper and cause big puddles on your palette. So if you notice that your paint is sort of starting to dry out a little bit, you can always spritz it down. Um, and I also have a container for water that you may need to be changing out now and then as you wash your brushes. You can start, it can start getting very gray and dark, and so it's good to keep your, that clean. All right, I also have a rag nearby and maybe some paper towels. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm mixing with my palette on top of the paper just because I'm on camera. I would normally have that off to the side not on top of your painting. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna mix these yet. I had to catch myself there. And I have various brushes. Uh, I like to use uh, brushes for this, since this is a square format that I'm painting in, this is kind of a large size brush. Larger brushes I use so that I can really like lay the paint down. Um, it, has a nice bounce to it, meaning that it's not really stiff, where it's gonna texture the paint, but it's gonna move the paint around. It's not that when it's bent, when, you, when it's wet, that is, and you push on it, it's gonna stay in that position, it bounces back. 
Um, so I have various sizes of this, and you get different um, effects from flat painting brushes, different um, application. Um, I'm just using it so, right now so that I can get into these corners. Now, can you do that with a round brush? Yes, you can. You can be working this way with it, but you can also get lots of strokes from it and it can get very streaky. So with the this uh, flat, you can we can go across it like that and clean it up because what we want is we want a nice smooth even coat. We don't want a lot want a lot of texture in this and we don't want it to be messy. So part of that your um, assignment is is to stay in the lines, get it really nice and clean in there, and um, hopefully I can pull that off for you. I also have some smaller brushes here for detail and getting into tight corners like so. And I'll be doing more demonstrations of how to do that later on. But for right now, for this assignment, I think this flat, you know, I could have various sizes of flats, maybe a medium, some small, just in case. Um, also, I want to point out that this paper, your watercolor paper, has kind of a bumpy texture to it. Um, most watercolorists, what they will do with their watercolor paper is they will have a special tape, like for watercolorists, and they will tape their paper down to their drawing board and then they take a damp sponge and they get that paper wet so it buckles up and then it dries and it dries flat so that when you're working wet on that wet sur on that paper again with a wet uh, medium watercolor it doesn't buckle up on you again um, but I just have this taped down sometimes it warps a little bit um, but as far as the texture goes you you're kind of kind of going to need to add some water to your paint. Not a lot, because if you add too much water to your paint, it becomes a wash or a translucent, transparent um, medium, kind of like watercolor. We want it to be opaque right now, but we want it to move and cover the paper easily um, to fill in that texture. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water. And you'll see what I'm doing as I'm working here. All right, I'm just gonna set this over here and I'm going to get a little bit of some water in my brush and sort of dab it off. I'm gonna put it right here so you can see me doing that on camera. Just dip it, do a little bit of that, get some of that off of there and you can even take your uh, towel and dab a little bit off like that. So we're do going black to white. I'm set my palette knife off to the side there and I'm just going to grab a little bit of that paint and get it onto the tip. Now I have some little bristles, unruly bristles here. That can be a problem later. See if I can get that to stay in there. Um, if not, I've taken actually taken a scissors and cut that off because it's pesky because it'll leave paint where you don't want it. So that's why it's good to take care of your brushes, not push them in, like have them stored upright in a container, not jamming them uh, brush down into a can or a container because it'll make your bristles spritz out and spray, you know, just get all unruly and that's damaging your bristles. I'm going to white and I'm going to fill these both in first. So I'm as you can see, see the square of that brush? Move my water out of the way. And I'm sort of, I kind of shimmy it back and forth along that line. And then what I'll have um, when I, you don't want to overly load up your brush because it's going to get really messy. So if I, if, I, if I have enough paint on there, I can run a bead of that paint down the line there and you can shift your paper around so you I'm, I'm keeping it like this because I'm on camera but normally I might be turning the paper so I can get at every area that I'm looking at here right now I'm trying to paint backwards <laughs> and then I'm smoothing that out so I'm kind of supporting my hand like that with my left hand my right hand with my left hand to stay, stay steady as I paint this. You can also use your pinky to steady your hand. All right, now I'm getting that nice and smooth. 
So there's my first, uh, well, it's actually my last square. And I'm going to rinse out my brush, and now I'm going to do the black square. Make sure you get all that white paint out of your brush. Sometimes you have to uh, kind of push it at the bottom, uh, like you're going like that, not jamming it down, because then you'll damage your bristles again. And you can always go like this while it's in the water, kind of bend it back and forth to get that paint out of the ferrule. This is the ferrule of the brush. And you never want to leave your brushes sitting in the water or your any kind of um, like turpentine or anything because that will make the the handle swell and the ferrule this whole thing will pop right off All right so that seems pretty well rinsed out and i'm going to just dab it onto my rag to dry out the bristles a little more and now i'm going to grab some of this black and i'm working it into the bristles a little bit and now we're going to the first square, square number one. I'm going to get just a little bit of water, just on the tip of the bristles, and grab a little bit more of that paint, that black paint. And I like to avoid having it really clump up here, so that's why I'm kind of going like this, pressing it down, then grabbing it so it's at the bottom, the tip of the bristles. All right, so this is going to be better coverage here. So this is good practice for you to try and stay inside the lines. It's going to be very critical that you do that for the next assignment. Now, one thing that you can do is you could always just fill this in with your, the bigger brush like this. Get rid of some of those brush strokes. And then you could take a smaller square brush, or flat, I should call it. Get a little water on that one. Dab it onto my rag. Grab a little bit of this. So I'm getting it on both sides of the brush. And then I'm balancing with my pinky. And I'm going in here and I'm running it along that line. Now, uh, when you use a smaller brush, you have to fill it up with paint a little bit more often. Just smoothing that out because it's not as big of a brush. So you've got to, but again, you could be turning your paper to get at the other side because I can't see what I'm doing right now, which is very hard. As you can see, I'm making a few mistakes. Just go down and get a nice directional stroke there. Now it's time to mix the two together. I'm just going to get some of that extra paint off of here and rinse these out. A lot of rinsing. Really getting, and you don't want to leave the paint on your brush either. If you just set it off to the side while you're doing other things, this paint will dry on your brush and it will damage it. And it doesn't want to come out. So you really need to. Uh, take good care of your brushes and uh, let's see there's that unruly one again. Now I'm going to use my palette knife to do some 50-50 mixing and I'm going to be wiping my palette knife off in between as I do this. So I'm going to grab, uh, we don't need a lot because, um, actually I'm actually going to do this because we're going to be adding to that 50-50 mix. I'm going to wipe it off, and we'll just look at this and see if they're about the same percentage. They look pretty good to me. And now I'm going to mix it. So I'm using the tip of my palette knife to mix this in the beginning, and then we can start using the side of it, sort of like I'm whipping it a little bit gently. And then I'm going in a circular motion. We don't want any swirls of value in here, or white and black. We want this to be very evenly mixed. So I'm scraping the palette with my palette knife to get a uniform value. And 
And then I'm going to divide this in half as well. So, because I don't, I don't need all this for a two inch square. See how I had some black on the other side? So I flipped it. It hides underneath there, so you've got to kind of press it down sometimes. That's why I like the metal palette knives. I had you all get plastic ones because they're more affordable. Um, but if you decide that you really like painting and you want to, um, you know, keep going with it, with it, this is a better... Uh, I've had this palette knife probably since the 1980s, so they last a long time. All right, so I'm just going to grab some of that out of here. I'm going to put it over here. To make some room. Uh, I'm going to go over, I, I've already gone over palettes with you, so uh, what you'll find out is that it's really nice to have um, a bigger palette so you have room for mixing. When it's really small, it's very, it, you feel very confined and you run out of space very quickly. So I'm going to wipe that off. You can always rinse it in some water as well and wipe that off. So let's get that center. Um, that center square painted now. Our 50-50 square, number six. I'll grab some of that. Flip my brush over, fill it up a little. And we'll get this one painted. So I liked how that went with the smaller brush. Kind of getting the center done like this. I felt like I had more control, so I was able to fill it in quickly with my value and then go in with the smaller brush and fill that in. I'm going a little bit faster. You, you should go a little bit slower than me. I'm just doing this for time's sake. I see people that do those time-lapse videos for their demos and they're painting really fast. Um, the thing that I don't like about those kinds of videos is that you can't see, you know, the technique that people are using very easily. Um, it just goes too fast for me personally. You really need to see every step and every move that the artist is you know, every position of their hand, the way the paint is laid down, you can't see that when it goes too fast. So there's our middle value. Now I'm going to start, I, I've got the black on this side and the white on that side. I know I have a little bit of black there. I can transport some of, tran like just grab some of that and put it on this side, most of it, because we're going to be um, working our way that way now. So I'm gonna wash off my brushes and I'm gonna turn it this way just so the white is on the right and the black is on the left. Get these rinsed out. Get all that value out of those, the paint out. Clean them off on the rag again. And now I'm gonna be starting to work this way or that way, whichever way you want to. Um, some people will go do one over here and then one over there, you know, just kind of see how it goes or they just go that way first and then go that way. So um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this. I have this value here and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. Start darkening that up. And you know what you can do here is you can always mix a little bit of it and then compare it to the next one. Remember, we don't want any really big jumps and we don't want them to look the same either. Uh, like I said, it's not like a set formula where you keep doing 50, 50, 50, 50. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're getting, if you're like, oh, I, I have to keep painting over it so many times, it's just good practice for you. So let's see how this looks once I lay it down. It's not always easy to tell when it's on a palette knife, so I'm just going to grab it off the palette knife like that. And let's start filling this in and see how it looks, if we have a good transition here. 
I may need to add more black to it, but I don't want to overdo it and have it get too dark right away because then I won't have any room in there for the other values. Also, it's a good test to see if you need to add a lot more black to it. So these are looking so similar. And once they're um, dry, sometimes they can dry to be a little bit darker. I believe that, you know, even when you're paint using house paint, that you lay it down and it'll look uh, light when you lay it down and then it gets a lot darker. Okay, I can see a, I can see a change here in the value. And let's just smooth this out, get rid of that little white area there so it's not distracting. Okay, so I just painted that with the small brush and I just filled it all in. I just smoothed that out. All right, so I can really see a nice transition there. Let's grab a little bit more black. Rinse off my palette a little, my palette knife. And I'm gonna rinse out my brush again. And let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. If we need to squeeze more out, we can. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit like this. Pull that away from my 50-50 mixture a little. So I don't start mixing it in with this batch. Flip that. Get both sides of the black paint off of your palette knife. Now let's take a look. That's getting darker. Excellent. All right, number four. Now, you're probably wondering, what if I can't mix these up again and get them to be the exact same shades? We can call them shades, we can call them values, or grayscale, this is the grayscale. Uh, but uh, this is why it's good to Kind of keep an eye on how much black you're adding to that 50-50 form uh, mixture that is as you go. You can see I'm grabbing just a little bit as I go along here. So, you know, it'll be close. It might not be exactly like it, but you'll have an idea of how much you need to add to this as you work on it. So keep an eye on that. Some people you know, they try to mix them all up and keep them in little jars. You can do that too, but if you mix up too much um, when you're doing this and it's not right, when you're doing your value scale, then you're stuck with them. But you could get them as close as you can and have little plastic or glass jars that you keep that in so when you're working on your uh, value painting that you're going to be doing next, then you have them already mixed up. All right, let's get the off of here again. Okay, I'll grab a little bit more of that black. I'm going to keep it over here. I'm kind of segregating it like this. Inching away from the original, the mother 50-50 there. I'll call it the mother mixture. <laughs> All right, that's looking darker. You can see it right next to this area where I just I was just had that last number four mixed up. So this is number three. So far, so good. See how when I'm rushing, I get a little messy, so don't rush it. Coming along that edge. Let's see how that looks up against it, value-wise. It's a nice transition.
Yep. Okay, it's looking good. It's a little reflective right now because it's wet. It is a latex paint. I need a little bit more water in my brush and the paint to move this around. Got a little messy there. Get it right in that corner. Get into that paint, the texture of the paper, and get a nice smooth stroke on there. All right, one more. Rinse, repeat. Boy, it would seem that I squeezed out almost just the right amount of black paint here. Let's see how this looks in number two. Flipping my brush, filling it up. good gradation here then. Just made my day a little happier. All right, again, remember to really mix up each value well so you don't have a bunch of different values in one square. It needs to be one solid mixture, one solid value. Need a little water. And then I'm going to go the other way. I mean, I, I could let you just do this on your own, but I really want you to see that it's different going to the other end, the different values in the, the lighter ones. All right, that looks good. Clean off my palette knife again. And here's my 50-50 mixture. I'll just turn it this way. And I'm going to pull a little bit of this away. It's starting to dry a little bit, so I'll just do a little bit of a... spritz that down a little. Got a little on my paper, only because I've got it in the, in, on camera. You don't want to get it on your paper. See, it creates little puddles of water, but you can just mix that into it. That's why you don't want it to be squirting. You want a nice fine mist. Grab a little bit of this white. Remember I was kind of grabbing about, I'm gonna grab a little less like that. And I'm gonna Let me pull that off over here. All right, now if this is too light, we can always add some more black to it. And vice versa, more white if it's not light enough. Some of this with my brush. And now we're going off towards the white. And that might, I, I'm not sure if that's too much white, we'll see, but we are going towards the lighter grays, the lighter value scale. And as you know by now, that this is what defines uh, shapes. It creates a three-dimensional illusion on a two-dimensional surface. 
and what you'll be learning soon enough is that we'll be uh, using black and white uh, paint to add to our colors or our hues to create tints and shades. So the shade being you're adding black to the color and the tint you're adding white. So we're creating like a value scale only we're doing it with color when we get into that. So now we're going to add some more uh, white to this mixture. Towel. And uh, I'm over here, so I'm going to grab some of this. About like that much. Let's see how that goes. So yeah, it's not 50-50 at this point. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of it, and I can always add a little bit more. It's best to add uh, too little than too much, but again, you can always add more black to it. Really get that mixed up well. See, I'm pressing down with my palette knife like that. Get a good mixture. Scrape some of that off. Rinse out my brushes. Now you might think that these, this is a big jump in the value scale here, but once you get towards the white, you want it to be a little bit subtle. So this is my number eight. Still a little wet around that, along this edge here. I can see right there, it got a little thick, my paint. So that could get mixed into this. We don't want that. Good solid value. Let me get my little brush. Got a little black in there, so I'm mixing it up with my brush. You can mix paints a little bit with your pa uh, with your brushes as well. I do a lot of paint mixing with my brushes, not just always with my palette knife, but you know the larger batches of uh, paint I, I use my palette knife. But when I'm just kind of grabbing paint to mix different values or or hues, I I use my brush. <laughs> kind of build up color by grabbing different colors that way. Okay, so we got this number eight filled in. Let's grab a little bit more white. I'm running out of room here, in case you haven't noticed. So I'm trying to kind of keep this in this little area right here. <laughs> I could always clean my palette off too, but I don't want to waste that paint. So um, I'm going to take my brush, whatever paint I have on my, pal my palette knife right now, I, I can grab some of that. Oh, there's a little white right there that is wanting to jump into the mix. So I got to watch out for that. Here we go with number nine. I have a little water in my brush so you can see it got a little translucent. We don't want that because what that does is that has lets the white paper come through the paint and it creates a different kind of a value. So I should have dried my brush out just a little bit more you gain knowledge from my mistakes. Mistakes are okay. You learn from them, hopefully. All right, so we've got nine filled in, and we're gonna grab a little bit more white and add that to this, this value. Clean off my palette again, grab a little bit of this white, right there. And I'm adding it to the number nine. This is number 10. I'm 
be sure to dry off my brush this time. There we go. Grabbed a little bit from there. See, did you see that? So I'm just really mixing it in. You can see a little bit of a value change right there, so I'm avoiding that area. And let's just lay this down. Oh, well, I must have some water up inside the metal, the ferrule, because it's leaking down into my paint here. So it's a little translucent again. Just grab a little bit more paint. Going like this, that kind of gets the water out sometimes. Now, see how this is, this is pretty much of a jump right here um, in value change. So, uh, you know, the thing is, is that the value scale, we could have, a, <laughs> there's a lot of values that you don't see with the human eye. This could be, you know, hundreds of squares. So this is a big jump right here. If that, uh, we could always take a little bit more white and add it to this mixture. Um, but again, it's gonna be a bit of a jump because we don't have enough squares to really transition to that white. It's always, it seems like it's always the, the white, uh, the lighter values that we don't have enough of a, a range at this end. So um, let me wash out my brush before I put that in there. And let me just see what this one looks like, just for the heck of it. It's still a little bit wet. Um, so you might be mixing that paint in with this if it's still a little bit wet, but I'm doing it time for time constraint. But yes, you can add some, if the acrylic paint is still wet enough, when you're laying another uh, color or value on top, you can mix them a little bit. And there are mediums that I'll go over with you later that you can add to acrylic paint to slow down the drying time and to make the paint flow on the canvas or your paper or your panel or whatever you're painting on a little bit uh, nicer than having it dry as you're working on it. So you can see we've got a little bit more of a transition. There could be so many in between these two values as well very subtle, subtle value changes. Uh, so this is your value scale now, and you've gotten the hang of, uh, hopefully gotten the hang of kind of mixing these into, you know, the, these percentages and these little increments of adding black to, uh, you know, more black to your 50-50 mixture and more white to your 50-50 mixture. So this is a pretty nice gradation. So now it's time to move on to uh, the bigger project.